Welcome to the Night Mode edition of the Mark Jackson Show. We're on the Come and Talk Me Network. Special shout out to our guys, Cam and Mace. I'm Mark Jackson. This is my dynamic co-host, my guy, Blue. Two best up, words bro? in sports. Game seven, absolutely lived up to the expectation, lived up to the hype. What say you, Blue? Oh, you know what I got to say, Pops. It's a few teams that's headed to Cancun. <laughs> they out of here, Pops. And hey, you know the tour guide is ready. I'm the captain. I'm, I'm the captain of the ship. I'm so excited to see all the players <laughs> coming to Cancun. I'm ready. I actually, though, actually, though, Pops, you know what? Because I got a lot to say. Before we even go down this route, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Go ahead and scan the QR code or click the link in the description. It'll send you right to the site. Use the promo code MARK. We appreciate y'all. All right, Pops. Now, where do I start? This was such a this was such an awesome night for my business. It's so many so many families that are just excited. Hold, hold on, hold, stay right there, stay right there, pops. I'll, I'll be right back. Don't, pops, don't you move. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Hold on, <laughs> pops, don't move, don't move. I'm telling you, stay right there, stay right there. Two seconds, y'all know. still watching? If y'all still watching, go ahead and like real quick. Go ahead and like real quick. Ten more seconds, ten more seconds. I got something for y'all. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. We're going to kick cool. Oh. oh, the camera's dropped. The camera's dropped. What? Welcome. 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 We're going to Cancun, y'all. Welcome, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Is that? Is that? Hold on. We're going on a trip. It's our favorite rocket ship. Zooming through the sky. Isaiah Hardenstein? Is that Isaiah Hardenstein? Welcome to Cancun! When did you get here? Pops, pops, pops. It's more than enough space on the boat. Let me know. You need some sunscreen? What you need? What's up? I, I think I see Rick Brunson. I think I see Rick Brunson. Is that Rick? Rick, Rick. How you doing, Rick? Bring the family. Jalen, Jalen, we got some ice for your hand. Don't even worry about it. Josh, Josh. You showed a lot of heart in that last game. Come on, sit right next to the captain. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fat Joe and Spike Lee. Oh, Fat Joe. That's not Fat. Lean back. Lean back. <laughs> Hold on. That's Spike. Spike, do the right thing, baby. You know you inspire my award. I love you. Come right up. It's another seat right by the captain. Only the legends stay by the captain. That's it. That's it. Is Josh Hart a legend? You're a legend for now. You're a can't cool legend right now. We got we to gotta, we gotta come back and revisit. But... Pops, great games tonight. Great. Is that an olive green? <laughs> Don't try to be my friend. You done killed everybody. Don't try what? to. Nah. <laughs> you, are, you, are in, you are in absolute rare form tonight. Well done. What you mean, babe? Baby, 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 you see the linens. You see the linens. We on Cancun. We right by the beach. The breeze is immaculate. Wow. Who is that? <laughs> Who is Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that Tibbs? We got Tibbs out the house? We got Tibbs out the house. No, 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 no. It's a party. It's a party, man. <laughs> nah, Pops, man. Tell me. Tell me. What did you see tonight? Did you enjoy the games? I know I had a lot of hope in the Knicks winning. Go ahead. Let me take off my glasses so I can see y'all. I had a lot of hope in the Knicks winning. We didn't pull through. But just like the rest of the Knicks fans, at the end of the game, I stood up, I applauded. We wasn't even supposed to start with the Knicks game, but it's just New York in my heart. So, Pop, what did you see from this Knicks team? I saw a fight. Um, but I, uh, the unfortunate part, and we talked about it in the previous episode, was the important thing in the game seven was who jumped out to an early lead, who got comfortable, who established the momentum early on, and unfortunately for New Yorkers, it was Tyrese Halliburton and the Indiana Pacers that set the tone early, that got it going, and everything was downhill from there on. They just had to hold on to the lead. Knicks valiantly fought back, but <clears throat> tremendous thought and energy right away for the Indiana Pacers. They understood the assignment and fulfilled it. Oh, man, Pops, I know this is my fault. I'll take the blame for this. I just got a little out of whack, but... We got we to gotta hold on on the Knicks. We got to come back to that because I'm itching off of just seeing this Timberwolves and Nuggets game, watching Nikola, Nikola Jokic try to will and play almost every minute of the game. 
instead of going to the Knicks right off bat, let's start off with what we just watched and talk about this game with the Minnesota Timberwolves, seeing baby Jordan come through full effect in that second half. Stop with the baby Jordan, respectfully. He has already told you and chastised you and many others that try to call him that by acknowledging the GOAT and Michael and his impact. But I tell you what, awfully impressed with Anthony Edwards because the great ones find a way to impose their will on a game even when they're struggling offensively. He struggled offensively, frustrated at times because he couldn't establish a rhythm, but took the challenge and understood the assignment. The only way that they could win was somebody has to stop Jamal Murray and slow him down. He talked about it in the post-game interview. He took the challenge of defending him in the second half, picked him up full court, harassed him, made life tough, still got numbers, but it wasn't easy numbers. And I thought ultimately the key was collectively the defense of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Their defense traveled. Three games in Denver, they won three games on the road, and they did not allow the Denver Nuggets to score 100 points. Unbelievable performance by a young, inexperienced team. But if you buy in and you compete at a high level and you have star power, you can win ball games, even though you're inexperienced. And you can gain experience while advancing. And that's exactly what they, they, they're doing. Yeah, Pops, I, I agree. I think that this was a big, huge statement for this team. When I watched the game, obviously the Nuggets got off to an extremely hot start. But – I don't know how they – how they that third quarter was huge. Do you agree with the decision to constantly double-team Anthony Edwards throughout the game, even though he never really got it going? Well, there's a reason he never really got it going, because they doubled him, and they were willing to live with other guys making plays and knocking down shots. I don't think that was their issue. They were outscored 60-37 to 37 in the second half. They had a 15-point lead. They had a 20-point lead early in the third quarter. Their problem wasn't – double teaming uh, Anthony Edwards or not, their problem was on the other end, they couldn't find a way to get help with Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. The, the, the supporting cast let them down. Look at these numbers. Gordon, four points. Porter, seven points. KCP, five points. Holiday, zero points. Jackson, zero points. Brown, five points. That is, that is poor uh, p- uh, p- production from your bench and your, and your supporting cast. That, that, that'll that send you on vacation. And that is a, a big reason when you get Murray with 35, Joker with 34, and nobody else, nobody else making shots, making plays, adding to the kitty, they're home because of that. Yeah, it's hard for me to watch this game and let Aaron Gordon off the hook, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I know maybe people aren't expecting too much from him, but the way that he's shown up throughout this series, I thought he was a little timid in his play tonight. And if I'm Joker and Murray, I'm expecting him to play a little more aggressive. I felt like he was out of, out on the perimeter a lot and even it even wasn't crashing the boards as, as he usually does. Um, on top of that, watching Murray come out in that second half, it was like a stranger. I didn't recognize him from the guard that I saw in the first half. And maybe that's a credit to Anthony Edwards, but it's also a little bit on Jamal Murray. Uh, continuing to keep his foot on the gas pedal because I felt like when he came out in that third quarter and, and the Timberwolves went on a 28-14 to 14 run, uh, I think that was a time where he sat back and allowed that to occur. And it was just too much pressure on, on Jokic overall tonight. It, it, it was, I understand riding a superstar, but for him to play every second other than a minute going up against these defensive juggernauts, I agree. Somebody else should have been able to step up and allow for him to get maybe a minute's break, a rest. Because down the stretch, it was rebounds that he allowed. That that uh, that tip jam by Carl Anthony down, Towns by, down the stretch is on Jokic. It's not as much as he played great tonight, as much as the numbers look great, he was gassed at that moment and allowed a game, game clinching play to occur. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know exactly how to feel about this tonight. Because if I'm Mike Malone, I probably would have went about it the same way, maybe not double teaming. Anthony Edwards as much, but um, hats off to, to the Timberwolves. That was a great game. It was a great game. Tremendous game. And, and they could have folded the tent being down 20. Nuggets started off, I mean, it, they were rolling. They could have, you know, looked around and say, who's going to respond? They all responded. Jaden McDaniels 
has been outstanding defensively. He's been outstanding knocking down timely shots. He's been outstanding as a competitor. Mike Conley, outstanding as a defender, outstanding as a maestro. Cartney Town, timely shots. You talk about that put-back dump, dunk, spectacular post moves, taking advantage when they switch and put smaller guys on them. Staying in character, using wisdom, not fouling out. Nas Reed, another guy that had a big, big put-back dunk down the stretch of the ball game. Rudy Gobert, the guy that we questioned and so many people doubted, is this guy a four-time defense player of the year? Is he a fluke? He's the reason why they lose. He responded not only defensively, he responded offensively. Layup in, in traffic. Uh, 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 I, <laughs> it wasn't a skill. <clears throat> it wasn't a skill fadeaway shot, but he made it. So whoa, 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 <clears throat> whoa! Don't disrespect Rudy Colbert. That was tough. That was tough. <laughs> so <laughs> with the so, season on the line, that was tough. It was I tough, but when that. he released it, did you think that was good? No, I, at, when he released it, I'm like, that's trash. But then once it went in, I'm like, these dudes, as soon as that went in, I was like, yo, these dudes is going to lose. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable performance. And then, you know, when you talk about, when you talk about uh, Anthony Edwards, 16 points, 6 for 24, 8 rebounds, <clears throat> 7 assists, but his swag. His confidence level, his bounce, never held his head down, never got frustrated, even when he was struggling. He just, he just is a, a, a joy to watch and refreshing as a fan of basketball. His mentality, his pro approach, his passion for the game, and his leadership skills. At 22, 23 years old, he is the, un undoubtedly the leader of that, that franchise. He's the face of that franchise, and they accept it. There's no longer a fight between him and Cat. Cat understands. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in second place comfortably behind Anthony Edwards. What an accomplishment by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Shout out to my guy, Alex Rodriguez, the great Alex Rodriguez. Uh, we, we, we're in contact, and I just want to say congratulations to you and the Minnesota Timberwolves in advance into the Western Conference. By the way, we did get an invite also from A-Rod to come, come as his guest to be, be courtside uh, watching the T-Wolves as they – pursue a, a quest to win it all why why are you pigeonholing me why are you holding me back pops why are you holding me back just imagine you see john starks at the game you see him going on the court just imagine watching us on the sideline and you trying to pull me back like yo get back off the court and i'm like yo come on come on baby jordan what you you don't want to see this the people want to see this get the people what they want pops see that's the problem you don't even understand. You're holding you back with that attitude and that approach on the court. I can't. I can't be seen that way. <laughs> nah, man. I'm telling you. I'm watching. I'm watching that other. We'll get to the next game in a second. But I'm watching it. John Starks on the side. Amari sitting over there. Amari sitting over there. Like, like I don't even know who he looking like. A superstar sitting over there in the cut. Like, <laughs> that boy John Starks was this close to a player stepping on his foot, out of bounds. This close. No, it was close. It was close. But what are you talking about? Why are we turning down all of these plays? Are we that exclusive, Pops? I know we're exclusive, but but they want to see us. What They want to see you. But when they want to see you, guess what? They got to see me, too. So I'm right by. What are you doing? What are you I doing? didn't say I turned people down. I'm waiting for, oh, until the lights get brightest. That's uh, all. You're smart. That's why you're you the brains of the operation. You got to strategize. Brains of the operation, the Mark Jackson show. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. Don't try to juice about. me. Don't try you're to right. juice nah, me. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. Go ahead and send a rod a text. Tell them just let, hold off for a little bit. We see what they're doing. <laughs> a great job, legend. Great job. <laughs> All right, pops. For real though, back to this game. When when I'm watching it, let me know as a coach. What 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 do you do? when you feel the game slipping away? Because I'm watching Mike Malone and I'm seeing the, the lead dwindle down and I'm sure in his mind he's pulling every emergency alarm that he can. What are those emergency alarms and how do you stop a collapse like this? See, it's different if you're coaching the Minnesota Timberwolves or you're coaching the Denver Nuggets. One team is a championship team loaded with veterans that understand the assignment, understand what has to take place and can make adjustments on the fly. The Minnesota Timberwolves, as a coach, you probably got to orchestrate a little bit more. Utilize timeouts. Call your offensive sets that you want. Make sure you got the ball in the right hands. I was disappointed in the, in the championship 
team in the Denver Nuggets, their response. It, it was a grind, and credit to the T-Wolves defensively and their intensity. They got them out of sync. And it, every, every play, if the, if the Nuggets score, you, you didn't feel like, oh, that's Nuggets basketball. You felt like, oh, that was a fluke. You know, they, they, they just got they, – they got timid. They got passive. They, they settled. It wasn't aggressive. And they put the ball in two players' hands, and then that was basically it. They made it somewhat easy for the T-Wolves to defend, and they took them out of rhythm, and it, it happened possession by possession. But I, I guess to answer your question, when you get to that point, you almost have to treat them as if they're an inexperienced team because you see them sinking. You see them being tentative. You see them being passive. You got to call timeouts. You got to orchestrate certain sets. You got to make sure that the guys that you're willing to go down with is in the ball game. That's what happens at times when you, let's say, take Michael Porter out. Now you put in Christian Brown. Brown. Now, now I got to go back to Porter because Brown's not good. Now I got two guys that's a little bit shaken as far as their confidence is concerned. Now I go with Reggie Jackson. I, 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 I put KCP back in. I go back with Aaron Gordon. You got to make sure there are five, five, five guys or six guys that no matter what, I'm going down with those. Now, maybe one wild card that can get into the closing position on a team, but I have to instill confidence in my guys and make sure even when you're struggling, I trust in you. I saw a team that was wavering with their, with their mentality and their belief in could they, get it, could they get it done or not. And I saw another team, even though they were trailing, walking around as if they were up 10. And, and all of a sudden, their game caught up to that belief and they, 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 they sent the champs on vacation. Yeah, they out of here, man. They out of here. But one one thing that I, I noticed, a big difference between the first and second half was Jamal Murray getting downhill off of those screens. I felt like in the first half he attacked, got to his spots and attacked those bigs off of the screen, even getting a few calls on the hip bumps and coming off the screens, attacking it hard. In the second half, I watched him almost drag the screens out coming off and allow, allow them to get back to him and allow them to make, make switches on the backside and cover every single option. And as much as numbers don't lie, when I look at this stat sheet, Jamal Murray's first half carried a lot of his game. And I, I didn't love what I saw from him in the second half. And it, it was uncharacteristic. And I, I hope that if there's an injury or something else that was uh, nagging him, I know you don't want to hear that, but... No, we're not going to do hope. that. <laughs> I'm not going to allow you to do that because everything was fine in that first half when he was balling and Swag was on a 1,000 and he was scoring yeah. and winning the battle on his terms. Same way we give him credit for that, you got to give Anthony Edwards <clears throat> and the Minnesota Timberwolves defense credit for cooling him down. I think in that situation, somebody's got to be in his ear to remind him of what was so effective and why he was so successful in the first half, turning the corner, getting downhill, attacking the bigs. And then as a coach, I got I to gotta make sure we run in the right action that puts him in position to remind him without me saying it, this is designed for you to get downhill. So I thought he could have been helped, but unfortunately for the Nuggets, there was no answer. They ran into a hot team that believed, and I thought it started with Anthony Edwards after the loss in game six, documenting that it was going to be the greatest game seven of all time. Now, was it? No. But he, but you have your best player, your franchise player, with no panic, believing and saying stuff like that, then all of a sudden we walking into arena with the right mentality. I can remember walking into the arena in a game seven, and we were all suited down in pinstripe suits. We, we, we said before we, we, we got on the plane, Everybody wear a pinstripe suit to game seven. We taking this like gangsters. And we walked into the garden, pinstripe suited down, 15 dudes. And it was like, we felt united. We felt together. We felt the camaraderie. And we also, without saying anything, delivered a message that we mean business and somebody, somebody's going to pay the price tonight. All right, there we go. There we go. <clears throat> Pops, I was watching the game. One last question on this game before well, my, we... I had a black pinstripe boy. He was looking good. Yeah, he man, was... we killed it. We killed it. Go ahead. I, 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 forgive me. I went back for a minute. <laughs> nah, that's fly. That's fly. I like that. I like that. All right, pops. Uh, I was watching the game, and as I was watching, I saw Anthony Edwards struggling a little bit, 
early on. And it was a lot of double teams, a lot of tough, awkward opportunities. And in my mind, I, I found myself asking, what is the difference? And this may seem like an ignorant question, but it's really not. What is the difference between what we saw Anthony Edwards do to deal with the double team tonight and what Michael Jordan would do? And, and it's not a disrespectful question. It's a legit, I really <clears throat> want to know how Michael Jordan would, would deal with uh, that type of constant double team. And I know he dealt with it, but just elaborate on it, Coach. Well, in fairness, we're talking about a 22, 23-year-old guy, growing superstar that's learning the game um, and, and, and played at Georgia where Michael Jordan played at North Carolina, won a national championship and was under the bright lights every single night. Um, so he grew into it and he came into it ready. He handled single coverage, double coverage, triple coverage uh, in an aggressive form and fashion. He was 6'6", strong, uh, crafty with the basketball, uh, big time finisher, was able to take hits. So he went through double and triple teams a bunch of the time and was effective. You can tell this is the difference. Phil Jackson or Doug Collins coaching Michael Jordan never told him at that stage he got 63 against the Boston Celtics with, you know, four Hall of Famers on the court as a young player. He didn't have the discussion that Chris Finch had with Anthony Edwards at halftime. He told him. He encouraged him. Anthony Edwards said he, he told me, look, they're double and triple teaming you. Facilitate. Get rid of the basketball. Get off of the basketball and hope to get it back. Okay. That discussion, I don't think, ever took place with Michael Jordan, respectfully, because he proved that he could, he could win a game being doubled. And then in, in timely fashion, he got rid of the basketball. But Anthony Edwards listened to his coach, followed the instructions, and ultimately – that makes life so much easier when you're willing to get rid of the basketball and make plays. So now you're not only a threat to score, but you're a threat to facilitate. And I love the fact that he's a young franchise superstar basketball player that still enjoys being coached. And he, and he takes what the coach tells him, puts it into his game, instills it into the game plan, and he winds up seeing himself advance to the Western Conference Finals because he was willing and wasn't stubborn. It's, it's a compliment to... To, to his greatness as a player and his bla greatness as a, as a guy that's, that's willing to be coached. It only tells you where he's headed. Yeah. All right, Pops. Last time, condolences. Happy vacation to the Denver Nuggets. Last time we're going to talk about you for the season. Get ready I, think to you should, I think when you say that, I think when you say that, you should put your glasses back on. Oh, you want me to put my glasses back yeah, on? Yeah, when you on, say on, that, so it's more sincere. Huh? So it's more sincere. I feel, oh. I feel Cancun when you put the glasses on. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> Denver Nuggets, Nikola Jokic, this is your captain speaking. I just want to let y'all know, it's going to be a slightly bumpy ride today, but we will be to Cancun soon, as soon as possible. All aboard! All aboard! <laughs> First trip to Cancun! First is that Peyton Manning behind you? Huh? Is that Peyton Manning? Is that Peyton? Pey uh, is that? That's Peyton Manning. Oh, my. Peyton, can I get an autograph, please? P legend. Oh, my gosh, man. Pops, pop. Everybody is in Cancun. Wow. Wow. I can't believe it. Mike, Mike Malone. Mike, Mike. Mike, you did a great job. Legend. Greatest Denver Nugget coach of all time. Greatest. All right. All right, Pops. Anyways. Anyway, you done got me back in my bag, man. My Hold fault. On. My fault. My fault. Pop. Pops, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Let me chill out. Let me relax. I got my chest out. Hold on. All right. I look all right. <laughs> you got your shirt unbuttoned. You yeah, ready for you know, Cancun? It's, it's vacation season. It's people going home. As a matter of fact, I need a little more sunscreen. Y'all, man, hold on. <laughs> Come on, man. It's, it's vacation season, man. It's vacation season, man. What are y'all talking about? We're not. <laughs> what are you talking about? The family's been waiting all season, eighty-two this games guy. for the playoffs. You don't know how I felt, pops. I was happy to see you when you came home. I loved Cancun. <laughs> oh my goodness, you are in real form, man. <laughs> all right, pops. All right, pops. For real, for real. Let's get back. I don't even know where I was at. Okay, okay. Yeah, Nuggets. Great season. Great work. Great job. Now. On to the game, on to game one of the Western Conference Finals. We have a big battle 
between now the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Dallas Mavericks. What do you see happening in this game one? I expect to see – I already picked the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I think it's going to be a great series. I think it has tremendous home run talent, uh, great star power. I think it's going to be a, a long series, um, and I think both teams are capable of winning on the road. But I'm going to pick the Dallas Mavericks to advance the NBA Finals in a hard-fought Western Conference Finals playoff series. Mm. That's tough. All right, all right. Let me think. Let me think. Whoo, Ant Man. Ah, oh, I low key want to. I want. I want to side with you. I, I got to side with you, Pops. I got to side with you. I'm, I'm with you on this one. I, I can't go against you every time. But I'm with you on this one. I think the I like what Ant Edwards said after he he basically talked about it. He showed respect and he said Kyrie is going to be my matchup. I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do. Didn't trash talk. Respected the greatness of Kyrie Irving and said, I'm looking forward to see what I can do. And obviously that means Jalen McDaniels will have the task of defending Luka. I think it's going to be tremendous on both sides of the floor and great, great fun to watch. And I think it's great for the league. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. The, the best part about it is a guy like Kyrie, his game has developed, even though he's always been an elite player, his game has developed to the point where even if you, quote unquote, lock him up and stop him from scoring, he can impact the game in so many different ways now, which is just a tip of a hat to a veteran who continues to develop as his, as his career into, enters the twilight. I, I will say this. If, if I'm Anthony Edwards, I do look at the way that Jalen uh, Jalen Williams defended Kyrie Irving. I thought he was very effective using that size, length, and strength to disrupt some of the ways that Kyrie gets comfortable offensively. And I think you can utilize that to give you a, a better chance of having a chance to defend him. There's no, there's no perfect way of defending greatness, but if you can study that and find a way to make him a little bit uncomfortable at times, you can find yourself on a successful end of defending Kyrie. All right, Pops. Now, everybody been waiting for this. We touched on it a little bit. I know everybody want to hear about this. The Knicks. The Knicks. <sighs> Pops, the score says a blowout. What did you see from this game in our final effort from the New York Knicks? I saw a blowout. I saw a team that got thoroughly outplayed, and I saw a team in Indiana that right away understood the assignment, set the tone early, made a statement early with their play, with their aggressiveness, led by their best player, Tyrese Halliburton. The pressure was on him to respond and no longer be tentative, no longer be passive, to get downhill. He took and, and, and made big-time shots, and uh, it, was, it was a great performance by the Indiana Pacers. And you, you look at the Knicks. So many injuries, so many guys hobbled, so many guys hampered, so many guys worn down. How many times you saw a play and a guy grab his stomach or grab his leg or grab his hand? Unfortunately, Jalen J- J- Jalen Brunson, you know, breaks his hand, and it's just it's just been a a hard fought long season for them, and it, it, it you know it, it ran its course. And you got to give the Pacers credit; they seventy six percent from the field in the first half. For, a, for the ball game, 67%, a playoff record in, in, in NBA history. 67% from the field. They were, they, they were 130 points. It was awfully impressive. And they got uh, 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 scoring across the board. But Halliburton and Siakam really set the tone. And here's the key to me. I know that everybody was raving about having OG Ananobi back. Whoever gave him the clearance... There's no way you saw him look and, and work out and you say, okay, he's ready to play. He wasn't ready to play. He made the first two shots, more power to him. He had no business being on the court. But here's the thing that people are not talking about. In the previous games that the Knicks won, I'm, I'm on record saying that I would not have started Miles McBride because I thought they were too small and starting, you know, four undersized guys outside of Isaiah Hartenstein. But they were successful at it. And what it did, they stumbled onto something. Miles McBride, Miles McBride became the primary defender on Tyrese Halliburton. 
picked him up full court, harassed him, extended him, didn't let him get into a comfort zone. When you put OG Ananobi into the starting lineup for Miles McBride, that now puts Dante DiVincenzo on Tyrese Halliburton. Cannot have the same impact. And you could see it got him going early. The trash talking, knocked down some threes, turned the corner, pushed it in transition. Wasn't as, was much more comfortable than, than, than we've seen him in a, the last couple of games when Miles McBride was disruptive. I thought that was a key factor in going back to OG Ananobi and not blaming him, but sometimes like boxing, Styles makes fights and it made Tyrese Halliburton much more comfortable in the ball game. Man, that's a – man, Pops, you you nice. That was a great breakdown just now. I try, man. If you're hiring, I'm available. <laughs> nah, that was nice. That was nice That because I, I appreciate it because now – you gave a great breakdown, and I, I actually have a list of just things that I wrote down from the game as I was watching that I just want to touch on, and, and you you let me know. So first off, I wrote down, I want to know who was on the side, because if it was not Spike Lee that was talking to Halliburton and got him going in that first half, then I'm upset. If it wasn't Spike Lee that he was pointing at and saying, Point, you did this and all, if it wasn't Spike Lee, then I'm upset. So I need the name of who, who that was. Because you got him going, and he was excited for the rest of the game. He torched the Knicks, which I did not like to see happen. Any comments on that? I don't know. I believe it was Spike, but I have no clue. So I'm not going to blame right. it on Spike. If it was, but guess what? No, if, if it, it worked Spike, if, if, if it. worked in your advantage, you wouldn't give that acknowledge that guy for getting Tyrese Halliburton off of this game. So it didn't no, work. No, no, only, only Spike could get away with that. Only the, only the, <laughs> that's only Spike. Uh, that's the only person that is acceptable because he's always – been there. That's his. That he's he he can do it. Anybody else? My man, my man, simmer down because you got he got he hit the last twelve points and you still talking to him. All right. Second point. Did you see James John James Johnson come and just clear the whole block out? When did he become? I understand he got hands, but I'm not just gonna turn around and walk away like the the whole the whole section cleared. Yeah, that was gangster. That was that was gangster. That was and gangster, then- pops. And came down like like he knew he was the baddest dude in the club. He came down. They, everybody cleared out. They was like, yo, we don't want no problem, bro. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Last thing that I want to talk about was, let's see. Okay. This Pacers defense. I noticed tonight they once again showed up. And it's almost like, and this is honestly the theme of their season, one day they're a great team that plays great defensively, and then the next t- next day, they're pedestrian. So do you think that this Pacers team will be able to continue this defensive uh, uh, energy uh, against the Celtics? I think we've seen it in spurts. We've seen it at times, and I think that they understand that they're going into this Eastern Conference series with a sense of urgency, understanding that if they don't defend – this is a Boston Celtic team that spreads the floor, that has home run hitters, that can knock down the long ball. So you have to be on point defensively. And I, I, I think this, this pace of team is dangerous because when they do, we know they can score. We know they can play with pace. We know they can push the basketball. And I think individually and collectively, they did an outstanding job of taking the Knicks out of rhythm, understanding the assignment, <clears throat> whether it was Nemhart, Neesmith, uh, uh, Siakam, Turner, they just did a great job. Jackson off the bench. They did a great – T.J. McConnell, again, outstanding. They did a great job of picking up full court and extending the pressure. And you have to be committed to that because not only are you extending the pressure defensively, but off of missed or makes, you're pushing the basketball. The demand that that puts on your body, it, it takes its toll. But this team is in shape. They're in rhythm. And they are going to be a tough team to beat in the Eastern Conference Finals. I really believe it's not going to be as easy – as people think it's going to be. And that's, I, I give the Celtics credit, but they are beatable. All right, Pops. What's, what's New York's outlook for next season? To me, I think you got to <clears throat> get healthy first and foremost. Get healthy. And, 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 and you got to, moving forward, you got to trust your bench. So, I mean, you think about it. Alec Burks was, was outstanding in game seven. And you telling me he went where he wasn't even playing a second in the games? He's too good. You can give guys breather and not put a tax or a toll on their bodies. So at some point, if you don't like the guys that's on the bench, 
talk to me about it and let's improve the bench. But you have to begin to give guys opportunities off that bench because it's a long season. I think ultimately you got to look at free agency, upgrading there. You got to secure the guys that you feel are, are part of your future moving forward. But the big thing for me is getting healthy and whole. And I, I think the future is awfully bright. This is something to build on. Outstanding season by the Knicks. Outstanding superstar in Jalen Brunson. You got another star in Julius Randle. Now, can you add to that? Can you lock up OG Ananobi? Because he's proven to be a lockdown defender that can guard one through five that every team that plays this time of year needs. He can fit that bill. But now you just want to continue to enhance off of what you were able to establish this year. Okay, Pops, we touched on the Pacers and the Celtics just a little bit. You saying that you feel like the Pacers have a real shot. We've got game one coming up. What's your expectation of this game and who comes out winner? Well, first of all, did you see my guy Tyrese Halliburton in the post-game press conference with the black hoodie with Reggie Miller with the choke sign? Yeah, I did see that. I did. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty bold to do that in New York City, man. I did see that. I did see that. But but now that you brought up, hold on, I got to put my glasses on now because I got to do this, man. Dang, I didn't even want to do this, Pops. Now that you brought up Reggie Miller, my uncle Reggie Miller, <laughs> I got some problems, Pops. Because after What's the wrong? game, after the game, I open up my phone, I go on Instagram, I'm scrolling. I see Reggie Miller posts. Josh Hart, when he came over to talk to him on the side, he got his headphone up. He like, what, what you got to say? He like, this is the this is the moment that the series changed and blah, blah, blah. And it was a great post. I liked it before I even finished reading the, the stuff. I got to the end of it. And did I not see my Uncle Reggie take my line and say, enjoy Cancun? What, Uncle Reggie? What are we doing? <laughs> do not do that. Do not do that. I don't even. I ain't even got my my teeth in the game yet. And the people, <laughs> oh gee, oh gee, there's a million other places they could go. Why you gotta send them to my city? You know they gotta see me when they get to Cancun. What you think I'm not gonna hear about it? I love you, uncle. I love you, but I I, I didn't like that. That was real. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I love you. I love you, but. Don't don't do that again. Don't do that. You I'm sure hand he's down, gonna get the down, message. A mama, mama that goes that man. Don't don't do <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> nah nah, it's all love. It's all love. I, I when I saw that, I actually enjoyed it. I was like, all right. I was like, all right. I'm, I might be moving the needle a little bit. I ain't the first person to say that cool, but I'm, I'm the first one to put all them U's in it. It was I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a different yeah. vibe out here. It, it, it was a gangster. Hit. It was a gangster troll by by Reg. Yeah, it was. It was. I like that. I like that. All right, Pops. Oh, what All do right, I see in game one? Yes. I can see it going either way. And what I mean by that is you have a Celtic team that's well-rested and haven't played in I don't know how many days. How will they respond? I've been in that situation where we had a rest, we had a break because we ended the series early. We started the next series, clicking on all cylinders rolling. And I've been in a situation where we had a rest from sweeping a team, we start the next series, and we don't have the same rhythm. So it'll be interesting to see how the Celtics respond, what they've been able to do during this break. Uh, obviously, they won't have Porzingis to start the series. Getting him back healthy and whole improves their chances. But also, from the side of the Indiana Pacers, they're coming off a grueling seven-game series. I've seen it work to the advantage that you continue to roll and have a rhythm and play fundamentally sound basketball and defend the way you defended in game seven and continue to ride along. It'll be interesting to see who responds in game one. But again, I expect it to be a long series and I expect this Indiana Pacer team to give the Boston Celtics all they can handle in the Eastern Conference Finals. <clears throat> all right, Pops. I, I, I think <clears throat> my, my pick is I got to go with the Celtics. But I do, th I do agree with you that it's going to be closer than, than people think especially seeing how they played against a, a depleted Miami team, a depleted Cavaliers team, and those teams were able to compete. So looking at this Pacers team, I expect them to come in and at least be able to put up a fight against the Celtics team. Uh, I think eventually the talent level shows and the Celtics end up prevailing, but who knows? When you got 
professionals, pros at a great elite level, anything can happen. So it's going to be really interesting to see. In other news, though, Pops, I heard that you got a little little Rick Carlisle flex that you've been holding in your back pocket. What's up? What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just, just communicated. Congratulations on getting to the Eastern Conference Final. Great job by Rick Carlisle, a former teammate of mine with the Knicks a former coach, um, assistant coach under Larry, Larry Bird when we went to the NBA Finals and had tremendous success in Indiana, just reached out and congratulated him. He returned the, the text and basically said he's been watching us. He said he loves the show and what great stuff we're doing. So shout out to Rick. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you down the road. Pops, it may be normal for you, when people like these legendary people tell you that they be watching us, but for me, it, it's a little jarring. Like when people say these that they watching us, I, don't, I ain't never been on ABC, so it feels good to hear that, that the legendary coach is, is is tuning in. I hope I might have dropped a nugget. I told him get 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 that that Luca and Kyrie pick and roll going. I saw it a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why that's why I haven't been telling you that everybody texts tell me how great you're doing and you're doing better than me. So I don't want to gas you. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. No, no, but that's crazy. That's big. All right, all right. You out here sending texts. All right, you work. You moving, right. moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's time for Mama. There goes that man award, pops. Let me know who won it tonight. Could have went a lot of different directions, but I had to give it to the guy that did it where the lights are brightest and uh, where the city's so nice. You got to say it twice. New York, New York. Tyrese Halliburton, 26 points, six assists, four rebounds, set the tone right away. We've talked about him being aggressive, 10 for 17 from the field, six for 12 from three-point land, flat out got it done, competed on the defensive end, led his team to a big-time Game 7 historic victory for the Indiana Pacers. Therefore, tonight's award goes to Tyrese Halliburton. Mama, there goes that man. There we go, Tyrese. I'm with you. I'm with you. I agree. I agree. All right, y'all. Go ahead. Before I say this, go like, comment what I want y'all to say. Let me know. Let me know what y'all got planned for this week. All right. Okay. <laughs> Shot, why you laughing? <laughs> I'll be I've here, been reading I'll the be comments. So I, see, I, see I, I see they're interacting with you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need to see. I, I had a list full of, they were shouting out a lot of different places. I ain't going to go down the whole list because the time is ticking. But I read all of them. I like them. I love y'all. The support coming from across the country, across the nation, across the world, we appreciate it. Absolutely. That being said, shout outs to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Go ahead and click the link in the bio or scan the QR code. It'll take you right to the site. Play the pick game. That's our favorite. That's a wrap for this episode of the Mark Jackson Show, the Night Mode Edition. I'm Mark. That's my dynamic co-host, Blue. We certainly appreciate all the love and support. Remember... I was 11 years old, riding my bike to a summer league game, about 20 minutes away. I got halfway there, and out of nowhere, a man grabbed me, tossed me off my bike, took my bike, and started riding down the block. I just stood there, baffled as an 11-year-old, and I stared at him, just standing there. He got halfway down the block, and he did something. He turned around. My eyes met his eyes. He turned back towards me and did something amazing that I'll never forget. Gave me back my bike. I, I went along riding. I say that to say this. I believe that me and you, some of you that's watching right now, this is a season where folks that have stolen from you through no fault of your own, you don't have to stand up and yell. You don't have to scream. You don't have to go crazy. They are about to return it. They are about to return it to you. You're about to get it back. And all you got to do is stand. Don't seek revenge. Just stand. It's headed your way. Thank me later. Blessings. <laughs>